Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tropico 6, an English person's dream. Because this is one of the few games where you get to go over and colonize a rock and become a dictator for life. Oh, it's wonderful. What makes this game even better for me is the fact that it is absolutely rammed to the brim with wonderful exploits that allow us to manipulate the many features of this game to absolutely destroy it. Now today, ladies and gents, we are going to push this game to its limit by seeing if we can effectively create a prison island. That's right, an island where nearly our entire population is sent to prison. Now many of you might say it's not possible, but come on. Sending people to remote penal colonies is a British tradition, and so we shall perfect that art today. So let's begin a brand new game. Now as all good dictators must know, we have to come up with some kind of constitution for our island. Naturally, we're going to make it so that only wealthy citizens can vote. Our armed forces are comprised of people who don't even know which direction to point a gun. Our entire ecological policy is based on just making as much money as possible, and there is no separation of powers, meaning that the costs of civilian actions are decreased by 90%. These include the cost to arrest someone, the cost to have someone assassinated, and the cost to bribe. All of these are absolutely fantastic. So wabam, our constitution is complete. Wonderful. So welcome to our glorious island that I will be calling New Australia. It's truly a brilliant spot to live. If you can look just past the giant walls of shacks, you can see our very jazzy palatial estate, where our wonderful El Presidente gets to hang out. Ah, truly a wonderful balance of society. Anyway, as I said, my goal today is very simple. I want to put as many people into prison as possible. Now you might be saying, Spiff, hang on a second, why on earth do you want to even put people in prison? And it's actually very simple. You see, when our population are in prison, we can set our prison policy to be entirely based around making prisoners work, meaning we can make money money off of their suffering. Yes, it does mean that the prison is less efficient and the inmates have to stay in for longer, but I'll just have to use all of these giant wads of cash to dab away the tears from my eyes. Still, we need to actually get our economy set up first, and most importantly, we need people in Tropico. We only have 200 population and let's be real, ladies and gents, that's not enough. So we need to set up a supply of food. We can of course grow our people's resources, like corn, bananas, pineapples, and we can even grow hay disgusting coffee beans. Yes, we can grow these so that we can dump them into the ocean. Right, we want to get our fishermen down and then we also need to slap down the pirate cove. And we also actually need a place to slam our population down. So we'll yeet them into these uh, conventilos. They're not exactly uh, the highest class of building available, but I don't care. Right, and the beginnings of our economy are getting underway. Most importantly, we need our population housed, because no one's going to want to emigrate to our island if we don't even have homes for our citizens. And trust me, we need to rely on a steady stream of immigrants coming in. Luckily for us, we have a few ways we can improve this. In the colonial era of the research tree, we can discover the penal colony, which increases immigration by 50%. Yes, there is an increased chance that each immigrant is a criminal, but that's completely fine by me, because that's just another body for the giant prison we're building. And our first freighter arrived, exporting $2,000 worth of goods, as well as bringing in five new people to live in Tropico. Oh, they're brilliant. Oh, and brilliantly, our Pirate Cove is up and running. Now, the reason we want the Pirate Cove is very simple. This bad boy allows us to raid, and one of these raids is called rescuing. Pirates will find castaways. Effectively, we're sending out an evil submarine to go and find some holiday makers, blowing up their boat, and then forcing the survivors to come and work on our island. But remember, we're technically rescuing them, so it's completely legal. If anything, we're heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, El Presidente himself has a brilliant offer for you. The first 10,000 people who like this video are given a free get out of jail free pass. Yes, it's one use only, but it will save you from working in the mines. So make sure to like the video. Anyway, onwards with the persecution, I mean profits. And fantastic people are now moving into our wonderful conventilos here. Look at this, they're beautiful properties that don't require electricity. And if positioned in central London, could be yours 
yours for the low, low price of $10,000 per month as well as a kidney. And there we go, we have finished the research of our penal colony. Brilliant. So now over in the edict section, we can become a penal colony. Brilliant. The other edict we're going to fire is cultural diversity. That's right. We're going to encourage multiculturalism, which in turn will increase immigration. It only starts out at 10%, but don't worry, this improves and increases. Now we do need to work on some more research and luckily for us, we've got some brilliant opportunities. We can aim for two very powerful abilities, marriage rights and contraception ban. You see, by banning all contraception on the island, uh, naturally the birth rate increases. And alternatively, we can introduce mandated forced marriage, meaning as soon as the citizen becomes an adult, they are immediately married to the nearest individual, which as you can imagine, has some very useful effects. Right now, our lovely pirates are returning from their adventure and here they are on, um, yes, this wonderful peace friendship boat, which we used to bring in willing volunteers. Oh, and penal colony and cultural diversity have leveled up. This is good. This increases the immigration attraction of our wonderful little island. And there we go. We've completed our rescue. Look at all of our brand new citizens joining the island. Genuinely, there's loads of them. They now get to become citizens and live in the shacks and shanty towns that I've provided for them. Oh dear. Right now, the island economy is not exactly in a brilliant state at the moment. We're largely operating entirely based off of whether an international foreign power gives us aid or not, which isn't the best state to be in, but don't worry, everything's going well. And we've mostly eliminated all of those dastardly shacks. Oh, and the EU just sent us 15 grand. Wonderful. Now, as you can see, the population of our lovely island is already booming nicely. We're up to 280 people, which is very good. This is our general steady pace of growth, and it's going nicely. Now, there have, of course, been, you know, seven deaths in the last year. The main reason for this being bad healthcare. This is, of course, an annoying problem. Luckily for us, we have one way around it. We're beginning a raid for the Hagia Sophia, an international world wonder which, if we control, will stop our citizens from dying of poor healthcare. This is immensely powerful indeed. Now, of course, you're probably asking yourself, Spiff, look, if you start arresting everyone, there's going to be some problems. Now, this would normally be the case. If I were to arrest this woman here, this would cause a problem. It would decrease the approval of the arrested citizen's family and increase the risk of them becoming rebels. And of course, if we were to arrest tourists, well, they would be very, very grumpy. However, we are very lucky because over here in the edicts tree, there is the freedom to arrest anyone. This means that provided there is an ongoing disease outbreak, the negative impacts of randomly arresting someone are greatly diminished. Still, if we are going to arrest people, we do want to get a courthouse set up. This is a brilliant way of generating money for every citizen that we have detained inside of a dungeon, prison, or asylum. On oh, fantastic penal colony has reached max level, meaning our immigration rate has increased by 60%, and we also get some more money. At the same time, cultural diversity is now maxed out for an increase in 15% of immigration. This is all very, very jazzy indeed. Ah, and there are some elections coming up. Now, it actually looks like we might be able to win the elections. 27% of people would vote for me, uh, and 44% of people absolutely hate me. Now, I could do this and deliver an amazing speech, however, I think it's not a good time. Uh, we're gonna say that, yep, no elections at the moment. Now, of course, this does mean that a lot of people now hate me because I've destroyed elections from happening, but that's okay. Everyone will soon be arrested, and then I no longer have to worry about them, do I? And fantastic, we've completed marriage rights, which means we can now amend the constitution, which annoyingly we can't do for two more years, but as soon as we can, oh boy, are we causing some chaos. Oh my goodness, there's a disease outbreak. Oh, it's, it's a harmless cough. Okay, so this disease is actually completely not dangerous at all. However, it gives us the opportunity to terrify our own citizens, which is, of course, exactly what we're going to do. Now, of course, we're going to start a viral virus campaign, and we will say that the disease is incredibly dangerous. This will, of course, panic people. It is highly effective, and the more our people's panic, the more open they will be for giving me emergency powers that allow me to, um, imprison everyone. Ah, people are getting more scared of the disease now. The panic level is up to yellow. Brilliant. This means I can now take many glorious measures, including the very brilliant anti-inflation measure, which means I no longer have to pay wages to anyone on the island, which as you can imagine, uh, it's pretty overpowered. Very, very overpowered indeed. And there we go. I've now set the panic level up to red, which is very, very jazzy indeed. Uh, this now allows me to enact potentially martial law and last resort. So of course we will enact the freedom to arrest everyone, which no one is upset about. We can also engage in the palace party, which just makes everyone really happy. And now of course it can make people sick, but of course this is a harmless disease, so there is no 
no danger there. And we can also enact martial law without there being any big uproar. Ah, oh, fantastic. And the constitution can now be amended. Let's go. Marriage rights. Bam. Forced marriage. Yay. Oh, it's brilliant. Oh my goodness. This palace party was a brilliant idea. I mean, sure, it's given disease to absolutely every one of my guards, but that doesn't matter because the population now loves me. And by population, I mean all of the rich people who are the only people who can actually vote. And fantastic, we've researched the contraception ban. Splendid, so we can now activate this bad boy. It will, of course, upset intellectuals, but that matters little as there is now a 60% increase in birth rate. Very good. And I've also now set up a tourism port, which means um, tourists can visit the city. Here we go. Now the tourists that arrive and leave will inject some wealth into the economy, but most importantly, they are more people that we can just arrest. And huzzah, we actually did it. Our lovely raiding team is back and they have naturally brought with them the Hagia Sophia, a splendid monument that costs $10,000 to even place down. But this Bad boy is good. We will no longer lose population due to health, which is very jazzy indeed. This pretty much means that our population from here on out is going to keep growing and it won't stop. Fantastic contraception ban has maxed out, which means we have an increased birth rate of 70%. Brilliant stuff indeed. And our population is now booming up to 394, which is very, very good. Oh, and it's time for an election. Um, Once again, I think it's, it's not a good time. Yeah, this really does lower the support to zero percent. You know, there's an ongoing disease, so uh, people are less likely to get upset about it. Oh my goodness, and look at our population boom. We're now up to 500 people living here. We need to find a way to ram people into one tiny location. I mean, luckily I think the people we arrest won't need homes to live in, but still, it would be useful. As soon as our population reaches 1,000, we'll begin our master plan, so I'll see you all then. Right, welcome back to our lovely Tropico. Now, things are going very well indeed. Our population has boomed up to an astronomical 1,000. It has grown rapidly and our tourism industry has largely fueled our economy, meaning we can enjoy such luxuries as a war crime dispenser. Sorry, I mean aircraft carrier. This bad boy is brilliant at stopping any international threats we run into. But now is the time to begin Operation Convict Labor, as we are going to arrest as many citizens as possible. First things first, we need to actually probably get a few more prisons in, so um, let's just slap these bad boys down. We're have space for around about 96 prisoners, I reckon, which is going to be a good start, as that now means we can arrest one tenth of our entire population. So let's give it a go. And using the almanac, we can find all of our uneducated citizens. So we will find them and immediately proceed to arrest them. There we go, lovely jubbly. Now remember, most of these people are simply poor, so arresting them is no major issue. Have they committed any crimes? No, they haven't, but because they don't have any jobs, we might as well offer them the opportunity of working in our wonderful internment facilities. All right, and there we go. I have just ordered the arrest of all 112 uneducated, unemployed individuals on our island. That's quite a lot of them, and they are now going to be rounded up by the police and slowly escorted over to our prisons. It's absolutely magnificent indeed. The first 15 of them have already moved into their new homes. In fact, many of them will willingly walk over and hand themselves in. How incredibly generous of them. Now one thing we have to remember is that the greater the efficiency of the prison, the faster we're actually going to turn out these prisoners, which is the opposite of what we want. Consequently, we'll be firing most of the guards to massively lower that efficiency. We can lower the funding even further, so now efficiency is only at 45%, which I do believe basically means no one is ever getting out of here, and you can simply enjoy prison for life. But yes, I'm currently placing down more and more police station so that we can increase the pace at which we round prisoners up. And would you look at that, our prisons are filling. Our first one is almost at maximum capacity, which is splendid. We spend $55 per month actually running this bad boy, but it's going to make us some cash. Look at our lovely prisoners go, running around, having a grand old time, leisuring inside the prison. Ah, oh, upcoming elections. Do I want to deal with them? Um, no, it's not a good time. <laughs> so Oh, goodness, that really upsets the voters. Still, doesn't matter. Anyway, this prison is now full, which is lovely jubbly, and that will now make us cash. And at the same time, so will the courthouse. The courthouse over here is an incredible building. It generates income based on the amount of prisoners we have, and as you can imagine, we're going to be getting a lot of them. Anyway, I think we could do with an expansion.
restoration of our lovely prison systems. Let's get four more of those bad boys placed in, raising our total prison capacity to at about 220. Oh dear, there's an earthquake going on. Um, bloody heck, right. Uh, let's strengthen all of the buildings. Very dangerous times indeed, but that's okay. Our prisons are actually doing good. Our main prison here is making $643 per month, which is very jazzy indeed. Oh dear, and here comes the earthquake. Ah, please don't destroy any of my prisons. They're very expensive. Anyway, we completed a uh, new raid of rescuing, which has basically meant that a brand new wave of citizens have arrived into Tropico after we have rescued them from whatever situation they were in, probably caused by our very own pirates. Still, this means we can now immediately arrest each and every one of them. Splendid, there we go. All of them are now going straight over to prison. Wonderful. All right, we've now filled up four entire prisons completely, which is wonderful. And if we take a look at our economy, we've now made 22,000 in the last 12 months entirely off of convict labor. Very nice indeed. How's our courthouse doing? Oh my, it's already made us 13,000. Make that 15,000. You're wonderful, aren't you? Hang on a second. Can't I just also arrest every single tourist on the island? You know, why not? This could be really effective. As we've got a bunch of tourists staying over here, let's find them. There we go. Now, the way these bad boys work is if we arrest them, uh, their family immediately departs and gives Tropico the lowest rating possible. However, if we just arrest both of them at the same time, that shouldn't be a problem as the only family member left is a 13 year old child trapped on a tropical island to fend for himself. I think we should be okay. I know we're going to repeat this process again with these tourists and Babette Laurent here. There you go. You can get arrested. Stefan Hartmann, you can be arrested and so can your wife. No problem. Yes, this is a brilliant way of adding to the stocks of our wonderful prison experience. Now I've realized the uh, prison system needs more and the best way to do that is to find one's political rivals. Uh, the intellectuals here absolutely hate me. So consequently, I'm going to take every single die-hard member of the intellectual faction and just simply arrest them. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it just works. We can arrest each and every one of them, excluding the ones who are currently working in the prisons, and then we can put them all to work in the mines, generating us the cold, hard capital necessary to keep our flourishing economy going. There we go, fantastic. Our prison system is filling up nicely. Over 200 people on our island have now uh, become voluntarily donated to prison. And in fact, we've actually run out of space for prisoners. So uh, yeah, let's just slam in another bad boy. All right, splendid. I've raised our prisoner capacity by a further 100 individuals, which is exactly what we're going to need. And I'm now going to slap down a few hotels over here. Each of these bad boys can fit quite a few tourists in them, which uh, of course will make a wonderful addition to our prison labor economy. Now the first wave of unemployed individuals freed from prison has actually occurred. So our first few prisons have drained back out. However, I've just found all of them and got them arrested again. So that's kind of solved that problem nicely. And our hotel strategy is working. Look at all of these families now moving in to visit our hotel. Splendid. Ah, yes. Murph here. Uh, we can arrest her and her husband. Her children, I'm sure, can just fend for themselves in true feral fashion. I'm afraid there's no room for tourists on my one wonderful island. Don't know why you guys keep coming here after everyone who arrives mysteriously disappears. Still, my tourist rating is abysmal, but it doesn't seem to actually have a tangible effect on the gameplay, which means we can just keep arresting everyone who steps foot on the island. Oh, and a new tourist ship arrived, dropping off 101 tourists. 101! Look at them all! Oh my goodness. Oh, hello, 69-year-old woman. You can be arrested. So could you. So could you. There we go. Well, Welcome, friends. Welcome. Oh, this is just brilliant. I can randomly click on this pile and just arrest all of them. Oh, this is just fantastic. Look at all of the handcuffs floating above their heads. Brilliant. Anyway, now that we have a lot of money saved up, I think it's time we do something very silly indeed. We're going to build a giant modern apartment. This is probably one of the best buildings in the entire game in terms of residences. It's very expensive, but very good at what it does. There's just a few problems. It costs a lot of money to maintain. At a maxed out budget, this is 360, which is very expensive indeed. Luckily for us, there's something very silly we can do. 
we can surround this bad boy with public services. One particular public service building is very powerful indeed, and that is none other than the fire station, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the reason we want fire stations is because they have one unique little ability, the building inspections bonus. This lowers the upkeep of all buildings within the influence range by minus 10% based on efficiency. It doesn't seem like much at first, but this is actually an incredibly stupidly broken ability, because by placing down a very large quantity of them, we're able to do some cheesy stuff. We've already lowered the cost of this modern apartment building thanks to the building inspections, but we can be doing better than this. So as you can see, the modern apartment building is currently at 345 budget, but if we activate building inspections here, this is now lowered to 331 budget. Best of all, it also affects every other nearby fire station, lowering the necessary upkeep to even run those bad boys. And there we go, look at all of the buildings set to building inspections. Suddenly the modern apartments budget is down to 230. If we actually set it to the middle tier, the budget is down to zero. This is very curious indeed. The building's upkeep is now technically in a negative state, meaning we are paid for this building to exist. Now this is great, but we could still do with more fire stations, but trust me, the more the merrier when it comes to this exploit. Okay, and now I've placed down enough fire stations so that the modern apartment on this upgraded tier of budget uh, still costs zero dollars per month to upkeep, meaning this bad boy just prints money out of literal thin air. Very useful indeed. Oh, fantastic. Our lovely brand new tourist plane has arrived. Uh, this is very powerful indeed, as effectively planes land and just dump 50 tourists out into the wilderness next to our giant quantity of fire stations. Now, here's the thing. Surely other countries would get really annoyed that I kept, you know, arresting everyone in existence. Maybe they'd send over some UN investigators. But here's the issue. If they do, I'll just arrest them. There's no way to stop me. Anyway, speaking of solving problems, uh, my money is now in a very unique state because you'll notice if we go over to the upkeep section here and then scroll down to the bottom we have a very weird situation happening the airport and fire stations and modern apartments are operating at a negative expense that's right that means these expenses are technically making us money this includes the airport itself which is highly interesting indeed so naturally we're going to be continuing to exploit this wonderful gameplay feature by building even more fire stations just to see what What's gonna happen. All right, my latest discovery is that I can build wind turbines with a budget of zero. As you can imagine, that's pretty darn good, as now if we go into the upkeep section, we can see that the upkeep of our wind turbines are actually generating us money. Also, our modern apartments are now also making a nice, decent bit of cash. And we're finally at the stage where we can set maximum budget on these modern apartments, meaning they have the highest housing quality possible, yet cost me nothing to maintain. Truly, perfectly balanced indeed. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, economy of Tropico has indeed been buggered. If we take a look at our expenses, we can see that over the last 12 months, we have made a negative set of expenses at minus 27,000. This means that we are in fact being paid to upkeep. As you can see, our upkeep costs here are minus 250,000 per the last 12 months, meaning we can pay for all of the wages of everyone on Tropico and all of our public services combined twice using the sheer volumetric power of the upkeep on these modern apartments. They are making us a stupendous amount of money and basically no one's even living in them. Simply by surrounding apartments by enough fire stations, they will just make money out of thin air. Truly magnificent gameplay design. Absolutely astonishing. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Tropico is indeed a perfectly balanced game with no exploits. And running your own prison island is a splendid way of gaming with absolutely no drawbacks whatsoever but yes i love playing this game and if you enjoy watching it then make sure to give it a like and why not hop on down to the comment section and tell me if you'd like to go on a tourism holiday to my lovely island i'm sure you'd enjoy it anyway as always thank you very much for watching a huge thank you to our lovely patrons and channel members and i'll see each and every one of you in the next one have a smashing day and goodbye for now